Rolexes should be hard to get. They should be. And if you're not willing to wait for a Rolex or the Rolex that you want, the fact of the matter is you probably don't deserve one. And in this video, I'm just going to explore this particular topic because I'm actually in the middle of touching base with a couple of ADs and we're working through the process of getting me the uh, fluted bezel, 41 millimeter day date in green dial, mint green in, in white gold. And I'm, I, I cannot wait to get my hands on that watch. I'm so looking forward to getting on that watch. And I also understand that this is an entry level Rolex, right? It's, you know, apart from the Perpetual, uh, the Oyster Perpetual, it is one of the, you know, the least expensive Rolexes uh, that they have to offer. The reality is for my personal taste, I only like two watches out of the entire Rolex product line. I like the Day Date with a green dial. I kind of also like the slit and the black dial as well, but the green's my favorite by far. And I also just tried on today the Day Date which was also in the olive green dial, um, 40 millimeter, and it looks stunning. The only reason I didn't buy it is one, it is like four times the price of the did just, and also it was eight years old. It was actually being sold by a company here in Thailand that specializes in authenticated you know, luxury goods like bags and like Louis Vuitton and all that sort of stuff. And you can get stuff at a, a pretty decent price. I think the, the day date, the, I think it was 2016, it was around 1,450,000 baht, which is roughly about 31,000 pounds. And you know that would be like if, if I did buy that. Just by the way, that would be my watch. Like I would not have to buy another watch like that. The only other watch that I could potentially look at buying is like a a, a world timer or something or something like a chronograph or something like that. That would be my watch, and I would keep that watch forever. I didn't buy it because I think for the the price that they were selling it at, I would rather just wait and get something a little bit newer and pay a little bit more. But anyway. I digress. Getting back to the topic at hand of why a Rolex should be hard to get. The first thing which I've realized throughout this experience of going through the frustration of not being able to just walk into a store and get what I want. The first thing that I realized is that getting a Rolex is very similar to business and starting a business and figuring business out. I've been in business for the last 10 years, I've owned my own business, I've got multiple businesses now, and there's a couple of correlations that I'm gonna try and present to you today to help you see why waiting for a Rolex makes sense. Waiting for anything makes sense, anything that's worth having, you know, whether it's Patek Philippe, you know, Vacheron Constantine, you know, any, any brand or any product out there, I'm just using watches because that's kind of the, the hunt that I'm on at this moment in time. Patience is the most important thing in the world. It can literally set you apart from 99% of other people out there who just need the quick win. If you are willing to wait longer than everybody else for the result, for the win, like the, the payoff, you can do anything you want. You can literally build and create any type of business that you want. It's just, it's just the way it is. But because people want to see results so quickly usually, they just want to go into a store and just get what they want you know, in the same day, it's a completely different way of thinking. What you learn over time of being in business is that some things just take time. Like for example, with Lancaster Academy, we've just built 10 courses that touch on each main element of the brand building process. And like they are without a shadow of a doubt, the best value courses out there, mostly because they are just as good as anything else out there. And they literally cost like $10 each, which is like nothing. And we also give them away for free as well if you can't afford them. So it's not about money. They took us like two years to make with zero payoff. We didn't even know if it was gonna work. So that leads me into uncertainty. When you put your details down on this wait list, and there's a whole argument about if this wait list even exists. Um, you know, there's multiple videos. I've certainly been doing some research just kind of in the background. You know, does this wait list exist? How can you, you know, get higher up on the wait list? Uh, you know, if you don't get a call back in two weeks, do you even get a call back at all? It does take a certain, appetite to put up with that uncertainty of okay i'm waiting to get a watch i've put my details out to the ads and i've told them which watch i want and i haven't heard anything back are they going to get back to me at all uncertainty is massive in business we literally spent two years building 10 different courses which we never even knew if they were going to be successful or not that is the type of uncertainty that you have to play with in business pretty much on a daily basis 
to try new things, to experiment. Some things are gonna work, some things are not gonna work. For example, with those 10 courses that we created over that two year period, five of those courses have done exceptionally well and the other five are just doing okay. We didn't know which ones were gonna do better or worse. We had an inkling, we had kind of an idea, but we didn't know. That's uncertainty at play. They could have all flopped. It would have been two years completely down the pan. And it's exactly the same with an EAD who you give your details to. You give them your details and then you hope that they get back to you. Now, it also kind of teaches custom management as well because your relationship with an EAD is much like a business relationship, right? At least in my opinion, at least in my experience and my research as well from seeing how other people have successfully got the watch that they actually want as opposed to having to go to the gray market or, you know, having to ultimately settle for a watch that they didn't really like. I've been offered... Um, you know, within the first couple of weeks, basically, a date just uh, two tone with gold dial, I think. It's just not my style. And I said to her, I said, listen, like, this is a beautiful watch and I'm sure someone would love it. I'm just not going to wear it. I, I wouldn't wear it. I would just either resell it and it's not going to be my style. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not my, it's not my watch. This is the watch that I want and I'm willing to wait for it. So having the ability to kind of follow up with the AD and actually build a relationship when you're in town actually popping in there and seeing her. I actually just got a message from the AD at Fashion on Constantine and she said that they have a 222 coming in for a client and she said, do I want to pop in and, and, and try it on? And I said, yeah, I'm in the city on the 27th. Uh, I'll pop in and, and try it on. I'd love to because I'm thinking about actually buying one in the future. And she said, oh, okay. Um, by the way, the client may pick it up before the 27th. So if they do, I'll let you know in advance. And I said, okay, no problem at all. The next time one comes in, just let me know and I'll pop in on the 27th anyway, just to say hello. And she said, okay, cool. You know, just building that relationship and just kind of, um, you know, just making the AD feel seen. It's not, it's not licking up to the AD. It's not, they're a human being. And ultimately in business, you know, you have to be persuasive in, in every aspect, you know, whether it's a client, whether it's a, an employee, you need to persuade people to do what you want them to do in order to get what you want to get. It's a reality, you're persuading with, you know, you're negotiating with your kids on a daily basis, right? If you have kids, you're negotiating with them. Well, I'm, you know, my little boy's eight weeks old at the minute, so I'm not really negotiating very well with him, or if I am, I'm losing. So that's a, that's a whole other conversation. With an AD, you are building a relationship, right? If, if, if you think about the AD relationship as just, okay, I just wanna get what I want and you're just a, a pawn in this game, they're not really the pawn, right? They're either the king or the queen. They're quite important in helping you get the thing that you want in this particular game. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You need to make sure that you actually build that relationship. And this is coming from someone who's just done the research and I haven't even got my Rolex yet, but when I do, I will make a follow-up video to update you. And just to kind of finalize things off as to why a Rolex should be hard. I do not know any instance in my life where I've got something super easy where I've really valued it. Like really, really valued it. Whether that be from a relationship standpoint, whether that be you know from working really hard to you know acquire a certain amount of revenue per month in my business or reaching a certain goal or milestone getting the rolex is certainly you know a challenge getting at least the rolex that i want you know i could get in a rolex tomorrow if i really wanted to but getting the exact rolex that i want the 41 millimeter green dial date just on jubilee bracelet with a white gold bezel, that's the exact watch that I want. I don't want any other watch. To get that watch in particular, I need to either go to the gray market and pay 50% more, or I, you know, I weigh it up and, and, and get the watch that I want at the price that makes it, uh, that makes the most sense. But it's a hunt, it's a game. And I think that people who are actually in business, people who actually value business and they understand that, you know, business is ultimately, um, it, it, it's a puzzle that needs solving and a, an, an ever ending puzzle, which needs solving in multiple different ways and it changes over time. Getting a Rolex is kind of the same thing. You need to figure out how to do it in a way to persuade people to get what you want. And listen, um, everything that I'm sharing in this video could be complete nonsense. Uh, feel free to leave um, your experience maybe in the in the comments to see if you've you know if you can maybe give me some advice in regards to how i could approach the 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 rolex acquisition journey uh, in, a, in a in a more eloquent way but yeah man i, I really appreciate you you sticking around at the end of this video and um, if there's anything that i can do for for you in regards to if you're a freelancer or a brand designer obviously lancaster academy is all about helping people build brands and and you know really create something special in the brand building process so yeah, if i can do anything to help you then yeah feel free to check out our website and i'm more than happy to help you out in any way that i can but yeah thank you for sticking to the end of the video and i'll see you in the next one see you soon